Hello, in this video I'm going to briefly go through my final design project for digital design class. For my final project I decided to build a line detection robot. This is the basic instruction table for the robot. This is my flow chart for my robot which will be used to design my state machine inside of my controller. I will always start by loading my instruction register with a binary value. That binary value will point to an instruction, so my next state will be to instruct. So I'll perform whatever instruction that binary value is pointing to. For example, if my binary value was 000, zero, zero I'll refer to my instruction table, which tells me at 000, zero, zero, the instruction should be forward. So in my flow chart, the instruction should be forward. And also while I execute this instruction, I also want to increment my program counter to point to the next instruction in ROM. The next state after this instruction is loading the instruction register and then the process is repeated. But in the case of a jump instruction, instead of incrementing the program counter to look for another instruction, I want to increment the program counter to look for the value that I want to load into the program counter. So to do this, I can use another state. So let's look at the instruction 100. 100 is a jump instruction which loads the program counter with the input address. So after I load my instruction register with 100, when it's time to instruct, I will recognize that it's a jump instruction and increment the program counter. But instead of my next state going back to loading the instruction register, my next state will be to load my program counter. By using this design, you can see how easy it is to loop through an instruction until something happens. So, for example, my robot will loop through the forward instruction until it detects a line, and then it will turn left. Here's the Cordis 2 final design file. As you can see, I have a bunch of inputs, ROM, program counter, the instruction register, a controller, and a, a few extra components added in. As far as extra features, I wanted my robot to have the ability to store multiple programs, display the programs on the LCD, and explain to the user how to choose each program. Also, I wanted to add speed control since my motors run at 500 RPM. For the inputs, I have a clock, a reset, uh, input for line detection, but I also have some select inputs. These inputs are used to determine which program to select. The programs are all stored in ROM. An example of how I designed my ROM in VHDL looks like this. It's simple, simply read only memory. And these two ROM their output goes into this multiplexer and the output of the multiplexer depends on the user's selection. The program counter is the exact same component from the 8-bit CPU we built in the class. Also the instruction register is exactly the same as the 8-bit CPU instruction register. The biggest difference between this design and the regular 8-bit CPU design is the controller. But as long as you understand the flowchart, the controller is easy to build. I added a simple D flip-flop motor register to hold each motor value through any clock cycles that didn't determine a new motor value. For example, for the clock cycles it takes to load the program counter, I do not want to affect the motor values. Therefore, I would not load them into the, motor, the D flip-flop motor register. 
And lastly is my PWM component, which just simply controls the speed of my motors. If you're looking for code to help you do this, it can easily be found on fpgaforfun.com. This big LCD setup is very inefficient and complicated, so I'm not going to go into that. Before I show you the demonstration, here's a simulation of everything. Okay, so my select is at zero one, and according to my robot, zero one is my line following program. Therefore, my motors are going to turn right, either right or left, until it detects a line, and then it will go straight. So let's see. If motor two is front, motor one is back. These wheels are turning until it gets here and then motor 2 is front and motor 1 is front. Therefore the robot is going forward. The small fluctuations inside of my motor lines represents the pulse width modulator decreasing the speed just a little. So there's two basic instructions to run the robot. Simply turn on the switch that corresponds to the program that you want to run and when you're ready just set the reset button 